Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. LSU in Arkansas, Saturday night from Death Valley. Hogs will come down here and get it on under the lights. Quinn Grovey will be here. He's part of the Arkansas Radio Network. Also, was a starting quarterback for the Hogs for three years, led the team to two Southwest Conference championships, and he joins us here on the Jim's Firearms Hotline. Quinn, thanks so much for your time. How are you? All right, I appreciate you having me on, man. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. We appreciate you joining us. I'm curious, uh, before we get to this year's matchup, you played in the Southwest Conference, won two championships. What do you think about the fact that Arkansas is going to be in a conference with A&M as well as Texas and Oklahoma moving forward? Well, I, I love it uh, for the fact that Arkansas will now have teams we're familiar with. I mean, when you look at Texas coming into the league, uh, I think that that is a, a rival for Arkansas in a big way. And then Oklahoma is really close in proximity. So it's good when you're in the SEC West and you've got some people that are close to you. And so I, I love the fact that Texas and Oklahoma will be coming into the league. And I hate the fact that Texas beat Alabama because uh, that that – you know, you know, Texas don't have any business beating Alabama the way that they did, but now they they've got this 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 heightened sense of that they're ready to come in and attack the SEC. And I don't know if that's really the case, but uh I, I think it really helps out for Arkansas to have teams that are close in proximity to be able to give you a rival. Because I still don't know that we necessarily have a rival. And if I had to say it was one, it's going either gonna be L S U or Ole Miss. But I don't know that they look at us as rivals the way a rivalry should take place. You know, LSU's in a weird spot because everybody that they could point to that, that you would call a rival has a bigger rival than LSU. Auburn has Alabama. Alabama has Auburn. Florida's got Florida State and Georgia. And Ole Miss has Mississippi State. And A&M's got Texas. And it's just it's a weird deal. But I think what's interesting that I think a lot of LSU fans may not realize is that rivalry between Texas and Arkansas still burns pretty hot after all these years, doesn't it? It does. I mean, it does, but I think it burns more for Arkansas than it does for Texas. Yeah. Again, I think I think Texas is more concerned with an Oklahoma or Texas A&M, and it, it was like that even when I played. I mean, Texas was our biggest rival, but we were probably third in the pecking order, and so that's just kind of a part of it. But the way you get to the top of the pecking order, you win games. Yep. And uh, and I think that that is one of the things that you know Arkansas has done over the last couple of years with Texas. Uh, we've done it a few times with LSU, but still, I mean, it's, it's, you know, that's what makes college football so great. I mean, you get an opportunity to play a great team each and every week. And if you can create a rivalry, uh, I think that really makes it, uh, it makes it fun, but you got to be able to have both teams win. And then you got to have something crazy happen on the field that, uh, either officials make a bad call or fans do something that, uh, enables it to be a huge rivalry. Well, you played the position at Arkansas. K.J. Jefferson's now done it for, for three seasons. Now, what do you make of the Hogs senior, uh, sig signal caller? Well, I love it. Uh, he's a big guy that's come a long way in regards to uh, his game, uh, what he's doing on the field, off the field. Uh, he's, a, he's a guy off the field that spends a lot of time with community. And so he understands what it means to be the Arkansas Razorback quarterback. And it's a big deal in a state that doesn't have uh, a pro team. Uh, but uh, Arkansas is really the, you know, the, the biggest part of, the, of this state. So he understands the off-the-field stuff. But on the field, he's just gotten better and better. He's a guy that does not want to turn the football over. Uh, he did have a couple of turnovers last week, which hurt us. But he's a guy that's not going to turn over. He's a guy that's going to have, you know, over the last couple of years, you know, less than six interceptions, uh, very pro productive uh, touchdown interception rate, uh, very good in the run game. Uh, his football IQ is off the charts. Uh, a lot of people don't really understand that or see that, but he understands how to break a defense down. And so I'm glad KJ is the quarterback because uh, he, he helps a football team like the University of Arkansas and, you know, a lot of people have talked about whether or not he's the best quarterback in the conference coming in. And I know that Jaden Daniels is, is up there as well. So it should be a fun battle, KJ and, and Daniels going at it against one another. Sam Pittman was asked today about the uh, status of Rocket Sanders. He said he ran a little bit yesterday, but he's just not sure. So I'll ask this two different ways. One, how different is this offense without Rocket Sanders? And two, what does he bring when healthy? 
Well, he brings an explosive back that can get to the house at any point in time when he's healthy. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, he's got the speed. He's got the size. He added some bulk this year. And so he can be very physical at the point of attack, running between the tackles. He's a guy that's looking for those four- and five-yard plays, and then all of a sudden he can, he can wear the defense down and then be able to hit that, hit that, that, that 70-yard play. Uh, uh, you know, the run game, though, when you look at it overall, I think it's very similar whether he's in the game or not. I think he just he, he's a great back that provides a lot of depth. I mean, he's a bell cow back. Uh, so when he's in there and healthy, you know, A.J. Green's going to be uh, short in some carries. The Binion's going to be uh, not get as many carries. Dominique Johnson. And so he's the head of the running back committee. And I just think he gives you a big physical guy that is fast. But the run game, I, I got to tell you, uh, really doesn't change uh, because they're going to run that inside zone. They're going to run that outside zone as their conventional run game. But when things get hectic and when Arkansas cannot run the football, you can rest assured that they're going to shift to the, to the zone read, the RPO. They're going to insert K.J. Jefferson into the run game because you can go from power, power, power to finesse really, really quickly when you have a quarterback that you have to, to watch. And so in the first couple of games, Arkansas did not run K.J. as much, uh, but they will run him heavily on Saturday. Chatting with Quinn Grovey, uh Three-year starter quarterback for Arkansas now an Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame member, member of the Arkansas Razorback broadcast team as well. Uh, Quinn, I, Sam Pittman's asked a couple questions earlier this week about his offensive line and how to get those guys uh, to play a little bit better. Have you seen some struggles from those guys? And if so, where has that been? Well, I think when you look at the very first game versus Western Carolina, I, I think it was clear that Dan Enos, the offensive coordinator, and Sam said, look, Let's go ahead and try to figure out how we can get these five guys to work in unison and run the football. We're not going to run KJ, basically. And so I think Western Carolina loaded up the box and really, uh, you know, overcompensated. And a lot of people would say, okay, it's Western Carolina. You still should be able to run the football. I don't care what they do. But that wasn't the case. Uh, But they overcommitted to the run game and, and, and stopped us in running the football. Kent State, I think they just won some battles. I mean, really, I mean, as crazy as it is to say that, I think they both knew that K.J. was not going to run the ball as much as they needed to. And I think against Kent State, we needed to run K.J. a little bit more in the second half just to go ahead and secure the win and and secure uh, what we were trying to do offensively. And then BYU, uh, K.J. had, you know, several carries as well. He uh, He had 13 carries against BYU. And I think that that's the sweet spot for Arkansas. K.J. needs to have in between 12 and 18 carries to be very effective. But the offensive line struggling those. But, again, I, I always say if your offensive line is trying to figure things out, sometimes running that zone read where you can read somebody as opposed to blocking somebody gives you an opportunity to be successful. So I think LSU is going to see a lot of the zone read uh, and, you know, whether it's Harold Perkins or somebody coming off the edge, hey, we're going to go ahead and let you come on back here, and we're going to read you versus trying to block you and then let one of our offensive linemen get to the second level. Obviously, Dan Enos, the new offensive coordinator, the new defensive coordinator as well with Barry Odom moving on. What's the strength of Arkansas's defense? Well, the first thing I would say is the fact that you've got two deep uh, on the defensive front for the first time in, in a long, long time that I can remember you got guys that you can rotate in it, and those guys are very good at creating penetration and lost yardage plays, and that's what you like about them. I mean, if you look at this defensive front right now, they've got 30 tackles for loss, and, and that's, that, that's a lot. I mean, you're talking about 10 tackles for loss per game for Arkansas, so being able to get penetration and uh, put the offense behind the stick. That is a big thing. So I would say, first and foremost, too deep at the linebacker position. I mean, excuse me, at the at the defensive line position. The second would be that you've got some very athletic guys at the linebacker position. You've got a guy named Jaheim Thomas that transferred from Cincinnati. He leads Arkansas in tackles with 30. Been very, very good. Uh, Chris Paul is a guy that's athletic, that's been a part of the program for a long time. He was able to learn from Drew Sanders and Bumper Poo. Um, and then you've got uh, – You've got Brad Spence, who is a freshman, who has come in. He had a pick six in the very first game. So 
they've got some athletic linebackers that can run. And when you have a defensive front that is too deep that can really compete and, and knock heads with some of the offensive lines in the SEC, then you got to have linebackers that can go in and fill those gaps and make plays. So feel very good about the linebacker position. And then in the secondary, I think we've got some athletic guys back there that can really cover. Um, and so you, you, I feel good about the secondary. I feel good about uh, this defense in general. Travis Williams has done a nice job, and so they're better. I mean, a lot, a lot of times we talk about Arkansas's defense as somebody that is, is really not helping, but right now they're helping because they're creating turnovers and they're creating field position for an offense that may not be hitting on all cylinders right now. Big punt return for a touchdown last week. How are the special teams for the Hogs this year? Well, I will tell you, for the first time since Sam Pittman has been here uh, in fall camp, they repped live reps on kick return and punt return. And that's because you got a guy like an Isaiah Satania, who is he's a track guy by nature, but he plays football and he's very, very good. I mean, he is very, very explosive. Uh, he broke a punt last week. But he's going to do more now. He's going to he's going to break a few more punts. He's going to break a few more kick returns as well. He's a guy that has the green light to take it out of the end zone. And so when you're repping live special teams, what that tells me is that you believe that you have an opportunity to create field position for your offense or create a touchdown for your offense. And that's what they're thinking. And so that's why they block it up. That's why they're doing that. And they're very aggressive in special teams, so they're thinking they're thinking it's an additional offensive play when it comes to uh, the return game. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your Fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.